What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Absolute Strength Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Hunt, and today's guest is Jason Phillips, CEO and founder of IN3 Nutrition. He also runs a nutrition coaching certification. This was a cool episode. Jason has uh, a lot of experience in the nutrition coaching game, has a really cool story. It was fun to, to get a chance to catch up with him. And this podcast is is kind of significant in the sense that from my end, from the back end side of it, because how I do interviews, I don't know if I've ever even really explained this on the podcast. I know I've talked to to some people about it, but the the way I do interviews is almost on a a season, like almost like an episode season based. So I schedule a bunch of guests, hustle my ass off, record a bunch of episodes in a short period, in, in like a month, and then slowly distribute those episodes over the course of like the next couple months. So it's like I record episodes really aggressively for a few weeks and then I take a break recording episodes, guest episodes for a couple months. And this particular episode is towards the end, like the last one or two episodes of the last time I aggressively recorded episodes. So I'm getting towards that point where we're going to start recording a bunch of episodes with with guests coming up. So the reason I mention this, I know I ask uh, quite frequently uh, on for free, for feedback and and what you guys want to see. But if there's any guests that you would like to see on the Absolute Strength podcast, now is the time to send me an email, kylehuntfitness at gmail dot com, or just hit me up on Instagram at huntfitness. Hit me up in the DMs, whatever. Give me some suggestions. On people you would like to see on the podcast, because I'm going to start reaching out. I'm going to start recording more um, interviews in in the coming future. All right, it's about all I have for you today. Let's just get with the episode. Jason Phillips. Jason, what's going on, man? What is up, my man? Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming on the show. This is awesome. Of course. What what uh, what you do today? You train? Well, I have not trained yet. I'm gonna go train probably an hour or so. Um, I have uh, I was at a mastermind earlier this week, and so I just feel like I got back. I'm so behind on content creation. So normally I train eight to ten in the morning. Spent that time working on content, so I'm gonna fit it in real quick this afternoon. Yeah, it's one of those things where uh, traveling's great and going to things is great, but as a as a business owner, as soon as you get home. You're like, oh yeah. shit, I'm way behind. Yeah. And I'm and I'm getting older. Like I'm not I'm not twenty four, twenty five anymore, man. I'm like I'm to the point where I can't just hop off a red eye and go straight back to work. Like I used to I used to be the king of the red eye, man. I'd get off a red eye and I'd be like straight into work and like crush it. And now it's like I get off a red eye and I'm like, dude, I need to sleep all day. Yeah. Well what's what's wild about that is I'm I'm just twenty six now. But now if like I go out, like go out and, and drink for a night. Yep. Normally, I would be able to wake up the next early the next morning, train, work for ten hours, whatever. Now, oh, I'm crushed. Like, yeah, I'd just be yeah. crushed. Well, you did, yeah. Working in the the real world, right? And even though it's the online world, people think that we don't really work. Like, it, it's it still takes its toll on you. <laughs> oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, it's yeah. I guess it, it still beats uh, going in. Still and, beats punching the clock. Yeah, I was gonna say punching the clock or whatever. It definitely is. Uh, it's definitely a better world. That's for sure. Yeah, for sure. So uh, let's take it a step back. How did how did you get involved in fitness? What was the story there? So for me, dude, I was an anorexic. Oh um, yeah, I have heard that so, story. That's wild. Yeah, I was anorexic at the age of eighteen, um, and so that's actually what led me into that rabbit hole. I um, really gnarly like relationship with food, and slowly, obviously, I overcame it. Um, but like, it was really that whole experience that kind of framed like me and, and fitness and, and that was where I was like, all right, man, I, uh, I got to pay this forward because it really like changed my life. It really like changed my, everything that was going on. Like I became more successful in school and relationships and friendships and everything got better. And I'm like, I got to pay this forward, man. It's like, it's truly the vehicle to unlocking potential. Yeah. It's, it's wild how when one thing starts improving in your life, it snowballs into the other areas. Always, dude. I feel like success is just like like momentum is powerful. People don't under, underestimate it. Like, it's uh, you know, one thing goes right, and then that's like I kind of have like this one thing philosophy in my life. Like, wake up every day. Like, what's one thing that you know you can do today? Crush that one thing, and if you do it early in the day, usually your day is a good day. Yeah. Did you uh, read the book, The One Thing? 
I have not, but everybody tells me I need to. <laughs> yeah, well, it's did you read essentialism. Like both of those are kind of the same idea, but essentially, it's uh, essentially essentialism and the one thing are pretty much exactly what you just said. Pick okay. one thing, hammer that, and yeah. your day's a success. Yeah, even in my like nutritional philosophy, I'm I'm very big on like a one thing philosophy. I think so many people try to overcomplicate fitness and nutrition in general. I think like I, you know if you can if you can make one consistent change routinely over time and then do that again. And just have like your focus get like really, really narrow instead of trying to like overhaul your whole life. Um, I tend to think you create much better success. Well, especially this time of year, you know, January 1st, you take it's, it's, it always blows my mind. People who never go into the gym ever, they don't do anything training and nutrition wise. And then they make this humongous commitment. Oh, yep. so I'm going to I'm going to start going to the gym five days a week and lose 40 pounds and get on this diet. Bro, you haven't even you haven't been to the gym, gym in three <laughs> years. <laughs> So, yeah, but they're ready, man. January 1st comes, dude. It's resolution time. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. It's like they'd be so much better. All right, pick one thing. How about this? Stop drinking three sodas a day. That's, that's step it, man. one. Like that, and that's my jam. Like I'm just like, dude, like stop drinking the soda. Or how about just get yourself to the gym three times a week? Yeah. Like, you know, how about just like get there? Like who cares what you're doing there? Like you don't need the perfect program. But showing up and doing something is so much better than what you've done the last three years of your life, which is nothing. Like that will move you forward. Yeah. Well, again, too, and, and when you make this like huge commitment, this huge goal, yeah, it's great. That's that's great. You're making some awesome. goals. Yeah. I like it. But what happens in three weeks when you can't you can't go to the gym? You can't maintain five six days a week in the gym. So then you go down to zero. Yeah. You just quit. Yeah. yeah. And so and everybody's very much like all or nothing. Oh yeah. Hundred oh, yeah. percent. Well, so. I think that's. I mean, you could probably relate with with the anorexic background in nutrition. I mean. I wouldn't say I was anorexic, but my relationship with food in, when I was in high school was terrible because I had that you know all or nothing. You know what's crazy is like you're one of the few dudes and like and I've been asked this a lot recently, ironically, like I connected with like Samantha Skelly and Amanda Bucci and a couple people where they were like, yeah. Man, you know, I don't hear that from a lot of guys and I'm like, You don't hear it from a lot of guys? But I would argue those of us that have really gotten in the industry and that have created a lot of impact and change, like we kind of started with a messed up relationship with food, like, and, and not a lot of dudes like to admit it. I don't know if it's not like a macho thing or what, but I think that honestly, the reason you're as good as you are and the reason I built the success I have is because we actually know how to empathize. Like we understand what it's like to be in the position of our consumer. And I actually think it makes us better coaches. Yeah. I a hundred percent agree with that. I, uh, and, and what's wild at the time is if you would have sat me down at 16, 17 and said, hey, dude, you, you have a problem. You have a problem with your relationship yeah. with food. I would have thought you were crazy. I would have been like, oh, exactly. come on. 100%. I'm eating cl- – I mean I have control of my nutrition. Come on now. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm eating good. This is – We all – I look we good. All even – I mean the sad part is even overweight people sometimes have that thought. So – Yeah, well, that's, that's the thing. Like a lot of times when – and it's like the it's a meme it's like a joke but you take someone who's overweight and they're like oh i'm not i'm not that overweight i'm not that fat bro you you like 300 pounds like of of course like i mean you know not trying to be mean but room where like we see ourselves every day like we go through the same habits and we really don't realize how out of control some things get and you know, that goes with us with entrepreneurial, like entrepreneurial worlds as well, right? I mean, I was literally, before we got on this podcast scrolling through and I saw Nick Cheadle and he's like, dude, 12 months ago, you would have, you know, my girlfriend and I had a terrible relationship and I was basically driven by social media. And that's like, he didn't realize that his life was spiraling out, spiraling out of control, right? And it's, uh, it's rough, man. Like you, we all have to... We have to live like in the moment, but I think that like self-awareness is so massive, right? I'm a big Gary Vee fan and Gary Vee is all about self-awareness. Yep. I think that um, everybody needs more self-awareness. Yeah, well, I think, uh, you know, it, it, it's tough because we live in this, this social media world where everyone's just posting their highlights. So yeah. you almost feel guilty. You're like, oh, man. Like my relationship's not that good, but everyone else who I'm following, they're crushing it. They're working all the time, and they're they're great. The perfect life, like everybody. Yeah, you know? yeah. We think that because we don't, you know, we're seeing everybody who who seems to have all their shit together, and then we don't, and we're, we we think there's something wrong with us, so we don't even want to admit that maybe we we have a problem. You don't take that yeah. ownership. Well, yeah, that's it. I mean, that or like we think our problems are so big. Sorry, my dog wants to say hi to you. Yeah, I like it. I like uh, it. <laughs> but um. Like we think our problems are so big that they just can't be solved, right? Like that's the other thing. I think so many people 
because we see the highlight reel that is social media, we just instantly think, well, our problems are so big, like we're not fixable or I'm so broken. And we start having like that pity party. Right. And the reality is like, nobody likes to talk about the stuff that's not sexy, you know, like, Like if you and I were to to sit here and we're like, all right, here's what's going to happen when you want to lose fat. It's going to take a lot longer than you think it is. It's going to hurt a lot longer, a lot more than you think it will. It might suck at times. There's going to be times where you feel antisocial. Um, Oh, and by the way, to get super shredded, like there's some hormonal repercussions that might come with it. Um, That's that's my marketing angle to get you to work with me to lose fat. You're going to be like, you know, piss off. Like I don't want to ever talk to you, right? But the fact is. That's the truth. That is the truth. The stuff nobody wants to talk about. Um, but I think that like it's real success comes when you help a, a consumer or a client understand those things have to be factored into the equation. And if you tell them, hey, it should take longer than you think it should because of the fact that it needs to be a lifestyle change. Um, I like I own, I own the Nutritional Coaching Institute, right? And we we actually coach, we help other coaches uh, come into the nutrition space. And so the quote that we live by is education drives compliance. Yep. And so I really believe you should always be educating your clients, man. I think it's massive. Yeah, you have the education piece because it's so easy just to get caught up on the marketing side, like you said. Okay, well, what's what's gonna sell? Yeah. Quick, easy. Yeah. One one quick one cool trick to drop twenty you know what I mean but that's not sustainable it's not going to work the, no. the the piece that works you 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 do have to educate the client and kind of start with the low hanging fruit almost like hey okay yeah this we're going to be in this for a while but yeah. you know here's here's what to focus on let's focus on the process and that's then. Separate ourselves from the results a little bit That's initially. Like the person that connected us is like Craig Valentine, and Craig talks a lot about like a, a gratitude journal. I think that yep. more than anyone, people undertaking a fitness transformation should have a gratitude journal. And I think that like each night they should write one thing they were grateful for that happened that day or that they did for themselves, right? Like even if they were like, hey, I stuck to my meal plan, like you wake up tomorrow, the scale doesn't move, like at least you own the fact that you're crushing the process. And it's the process where we have to start living. Like we can't start li- like we can't get caught up living in results because results you could do everything right by physiology and sometimes results don't happen. Or you could do everything completely ass backwards and all the results happen. Yes. And, and like there's no logical explanation for it, but you the only thing you can control is your attitudes and actions. And so, you know, control your action, do the right thing, and then Stop looking myopically at a number on a scale or an image in a mirror and control your attitude. And I think if you do those things, like you're successful in all aspects of life. Yeah, 100%. 100% agree. I always say to my clients that if you want to get addicted to anything, have it be the process. Day in, day out, just get get addicted to that. Don't get addicted to the weight loss. Don't get addicted to what you're looking like. Because like you said, a lot of times people get results in spite of what they do, not because of what they do. So So you start looking at people like, oh, man, why is that guy – like he's he's shredded. Then you want to jump on his program. Even though what you are doing is probably working and and the process is just taking shape. But you want to jump off because you see something else. Yeah. Amen, dude. <laughs> That's wild. So how did uh, how did you go from this anorexic guy just getting involved in fitness and kind of changing your life that way into the, the coaching and the, the, the business side of the fitness? So, I mean, I kind of dabbled in it. Like, you know, it was always like a side gig. I always wanted to help people. Um, and then, you know, I, I was like everyone else, man. I'm like, you can't do this online thing and actually make enough money. And like, I come from like a very traditional family. You know, my mom's like, you got to have a real, even, even like when I made my first, like multiple six figures when I was doing 200 K plus my mom was like, so when are you going to get a real job? Oh yeah. Trust me. I know about that. You never made six figures in your life, let alone multiple six figures. What do you mean? I need a real job. She's like, well, you know, with benefits. Yeah. I'm like, (laughs) I pay, I pay my own insurance. Like I got benefits. The benefit is more money in my bank account and I'm helping a lot of people. Like that's a benefit. I Uh, (laughs) dude, I can relate to that so much. (laughs) Yeah. It's because, so I, I come from that traditionalism. My my family's the same. Oh, dude, I, it's, it's crazy because when, and, and I'm a, I'm getting ready to be a father of a fourth kid here in, uh, six weeks. Wow, so, I, have, I have one and I uh, oh. think that's about enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I should, I should reframe. I'm a stepfather to three and I'm getting ready to become a true father. Oh, okay. Three. Um, so, but it's, um, you know, I think that 10, 15 years from now, we're going to be the parents that are super accepting 
of all of this stuff because it's what we grew up with. Like if my kid's like, Hey, I want to be a YouTuber. I'm going to be like, cool, dude, like be a YouTuber because I recognize there's a lot of value in that and there's some autonomy. And you know, so it's, it's really interesting to see that cultural shift that will take place as we age. Well, what's wild even to think about it from that perspective is there might be some crazy new shit that maybe we act like our parents and, and oh, yeah. our kid goes and yeah, like, yeah, that's true. We're hey, like, why don't you be a YouTuber? Yeah, that's what I'm like, saying. Like some old shit. Like, yeah, like you know, what the hell is YouTube? <laughs> seriously. That Facebook thing, that's for seniors. Like, that yeah, might happen. that's what I think about sometimes. I'm like, oh man, maybe, you know, maybe we're like, why don't Maybe there's some like I don't know some crazy new thing, and they want to do that. And like, why don't you just make YouTube videos? I'm like, YouTube, Dad, that's yep. that was like, yeah, that, that's for old people like you. <laughs> yeah, we'll be giving our kids advice, or they'll be giving us advice. I always say the best thing we can do is learn from our kids. Oh yeah, well you always you always hear uh, like like college professors talk about that they since they're around younger people, it kind of keeps them younger. I don't know how true that is, but I've heard people say it. Definitely. I mean, I would say you have a, an advantage in terms of success. I mean, you have a pulse on the next generation, right? And so it's a great audience builder. But um, yeah, I mean, so, you know, I came from this traditional family. They were like, don't do it. So I always kind of tried to dabble with the corporate world. But every time I got a corporate job, I was like, I would quit like in a month because yeah. I'm like, I just can't work for somebody. Or like, I would just identify things that I'm like, why the fuck is this happening this way? Like I, like you guys are stupid, right? Like I've always had that like forward thinking mind. And so I quit enough corporate jobs. Um, I quit my last one in, let's see, 2015. Um, that's not too long ago. Yeah. Not terribly long ago. And so, um, unfortunately I didn't really have a backup plan. And so I quit in August. What were you doing? Just out of curiosity. uh, I was running one of the largest uh, CrossFit companies in the space. Oh, okay. So they do like a lot of like individual design and they, they had seminars. And so I was like their GM, I was just running all their systems. And, and honestly I did a very good job. Like it grew them a hundred percent revenue in one quarter. And, um, I had a very good business acumen. And so I was like, well, but again, just a fundamental disagreement as to how they operated, not feeling validated for the amount of work I was putting in. And again, always that entrepreneurial spirit. Um, I was actually on a plane, um, and the gentleman asked me like a question and he said, Hey, like, you know, uh, you look fit. Like, can you help me with my diet? Or I was like, sure. And like, we had this like 30 minute conversation on the plane and we landed and I'm like, I was literally like beaming like ear to ear, man. Like I was so gratified by that conversation and so just like lit up and I'm like, you know what? Like, this is what I'm supposed to do. And so like we landed and I sent in my resignation from my phone. Yeah. That's wild. And, like hadn't even thought of it, had no idea. I was considering like leaving this place. I really probably hadn't even thought of it, but I'm like, fuck this. I'm out. Yeah. And, um, yeah, dude, uh, three or four months later. So Thanksgiving of 2015, I woke up and I was overdrawn on my bank account Mm -hmm. and I wasn't just at home. Like I was on a ski trip and so I couldn't buy my morning coffee. I couldn't even afford Thanksgiving dinner. Um, and so I literally was in the grocery store that morning. And I pull open my phone and I look at like my app and I bank with SunTrust. So I look at like my SunTrust app and yeah. I'm like, all of a sudden out of nowhere, a $500 check had cleared. And I'm like, it's a bank holiday. Like that's not supposed to happen. Yeah. Right. And so I call it my Thanksgiving miracle. And I was fortunate enough to have enough money in my account to pay for the groceries, pay for my coffee, pay for Thanksgiving dinner. And I went home and I was like, I know that value is the vehicle to you know, creating financial success for myself and getting myself out of this hole, I'm going to add value to every person I possibly can in this world. And I went home and that was literally the beginning of the business I own now, um, which is a multiple seven figure business. So what was, uh, what happened? Like what was the, what was the story there? Why was I overdrawn? Yeah. Well, dude, I was fucking stupid. Like more than anything, I just, I like when I was making the money, I wasn't saving it. Um, I just, you know, I mean, because you know, GM of a facility, you're making a six figure income. I was just spending money, yeah. and um, when you quit a job and you have no clue what you're going to do for four months, and you don't have any clients yet, yeah. like you run through your money pretty quickly. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, so I woke up and I just I had overspent, man. I, I had on, like not planned it out. I, I missed by like obviously a day because I knew that check was clearing, mm-hmm. but obviously not on Thanksgiving Day, and so I had missed time some expenses, and it is bad. That's it wild. Really- 
But so I went from overdrawn to seven figures in less than three years. What was what was the first step? I mean, you talked about the value, but maybe beyond yeah, that. Honestly, man, going home and making that decision. And I think so many people, right? I, I've hosted a couple of masterminds, and like every single person I talk to is like, "Well, I think I can." Like, you got to go home and you got to believe. Like, I'm all in on myself, right? I am 100% of the opinion that if I go home and I crush it the way I know I can crush it and I add value the way I know I can add value, that like anything is possible. And But you're either in or you're out, right? Yeah. You're not halfway in because if you're halfway in, you're also halfway out. And and that halfway out tends to win out in the online space. Oh, yeah. So you're either all in or you're not and I had to go all in. We well, got to make that, that choice. As soon as That's you make it. the choice, like, okay, you're going to do this. Then you have to do it, and you have to take action. I think that's, that's a, I think that's another, so, yeah, like a, an issue that people have is they make the decision, and like you said, they're probably only one foot in the door, and it's the action step that's that's the foot that's out the door. Like the, in their head, they're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do this. That, uh, the idea makes sense to me. Let me do it. But then the action step, what's more important, that's where you're like, well, I don't know if I really want to take all that commitment right. on. Right. Right. Yeah, yep, that's it, dude. I completely agree. I think so many people are in that boat. They're like, I, they say they want to do it, but the actions don't really follow. Well, it was funny. So, I mean, completely different uh, areas in life. But when I started my business at 17, I mean, I, I had always been grinding in high school. Like I worked a, yep. a contracting job. I did a little bit of personal training when I could. I wasn't even old enough to be a certified trainer. I just got in and started doing it. Yeah. And then once I went online in 2010, I pretty much just said, you know what, I'm going to stop doing everything else. Like, yeah. I mean, I don't and have that's a smart. That's probably why you found success so quickly. Yeah. And it wasn't so much in that, uh, you know, I, I didn't have many, <laughs> um, I didn't have many expenses. So it wasn't like it was, uh, you know, like today it would be very hard for me to do that. I have a family yeah. and a kid, but back then I didn't really have anything to lose. I said, screw it. I'm just going to I'm going to take a, I have no idea how this is going to work. I mean, it wasn't like there was a blueprint in 2010 on how to do online coaching. It definitely is not where it is today. Yeah, exactly. So I was like, fuck it. I'm going to try this. And I quit doing everything else and I had no backup plan, but it ended up working. But it's smart, man. I mean, and honestly, I don't regret going broke. Like I, I knew it was a risk and, and I, I would go broke again tomorrow and I would rebuild it because I really know the key is just going all in. Like it's going all in on yourself. Like I know that I have the skill set to help people, you know, and I know that I've built that over time. And so it's just, it's everything is a function of value. If you're going out and you're adding enough value to enough people's lives, you truly can have anything you want. hundred percent. That story is kind of uh, similar to Jason Frugia. Dude, him and I are super close. Oh yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Jason, yeah. he was, I had him on the, on the podcast and he, he actually went broke twice. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Jay is uh Jay's a good dude, man. Him and I we had dinner two nights ago actually. Oh, that's awesome. Where yeah. where are you located at? I'm in DC, but I was actually out in LA oh, okay. uh, for Craig and Bedros Empire Mastermind. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so I had dinner Wednesday night with Jay. So so to to backtrack here, you were quit your job, yeah. went broke, yeah. came back, went all yeah. in, yeah. started growing it. Yeah. Then what's the end? <laughs> the end is where we are today. Yeah, man. Yeah. The end is I've got a business that serves over a thousand. Like we hit, we did, uh, we helped thirty three hundred people last year, um, and you know, I've got a team of fifteen people. Um, and most recently, I opened up the education platform that I believe will change the future. Um, I think right now there's a couple of nutrition certifications, but um, anyone out there that has taken one will absolutely corroborate with the statement. Um, every certification lacks an application component yep. and we're the first out there to bridge that gap. Um, and so I own the nutritional coaching Institute, uh, and we actually teach people to be nutritional coaches, which is day one, you come in, we teach you all the science, all the physiology, all the biology, all the stuff that you have to know, right? Mm-hmm. You can't sit there and talk to like an overweight client and be like, well, like I'm just going to slash your calories. I don't fucking know why I don't know what BMR is, but Hey, I think this works, right? Yeah, like, yeah. You clearly have to be able to articulate. Um, however, you also have to understand that real life is going to come at you. And even though daily energy expenditure equation says that Mrs. Jones's fat loss calories should be 1800, um, but she's only eating 800 and she's not losing fat. Why does that happen? And, And that's the kind of stuff that we're teaching. And that's the kind of stuff where, Hey, when you go out in the real world and you can't get your clients even hit their numbers for two weeks, how do you help them? Like that's an issue. Um, And so that's the stuff that we really harp on in NCI and that's the community of educators that I'm building. Um, And so I really genuinely with everything in me believe that 
20, 30 years from now, like NCI is going to be, that's going to be the place where every nutrition coach will have gone. Well, that's because that's important stuff. I mean, in my opinion, in my opinion, it's the most important, the most important knowledge, of course, but I genuinely like the reason I think I have found success um, in helping clients is because I understand application better than anyone else. Yeah, well, that was one thing that I always dealt with when I was in school, when I was in college, because I'm sitting in these classes, because I, like I said, I started a business, I was like 17, 18. Yeah. I started working with a bunch of clients all throughout college, and I'm sitting in class, because I got an exercise science degree, and you know, talking about programming, and talking about the nutrition side of it, and we're, we're doing all the stuff, and I'm like, man, there's something missing that's not being taught that I'm dealing with in the real world here, that one, adherence. Yep. Yeah, this is great. This is all great. Everything that's up on the board is great. Problem is, how do you get people to, to do it? Yeah, what if they miss a day? Now yeah. what do you do? Like, no. Yeah, and, and those are the things that happen in the real world, and they happen more often than not. Like The perfect client that is spoken about in classrooms and certifications really doesn't exist. No. Like, I think in 15 years, I've, I've easily helped probably 10,000 plus people. I might have had like two perfect clients. Yeah, say I say the same thing. I've worked with over a thousand people, and I a couple, a couple yeah. people that just went by the book, you know, and just like I was, yeah. and I was surprised. It was, I was like, go by the book. What happens when they get sick, or what happens when they go on vacation, or like, like that's the stuff that we got to know as educators. But like, you don't go into a class, and it's not like, all right, like nutrition one hundred and one. When Mrs. Jones goes on vacation for four days, and she's twelve weeks into her fat loss program, but she's missed five days of hitting her numbers, this is what you give her. Like, yep. That avatar doesn't exist. And honestly, like I can't build that out, but I have to teach you the tools to assess the situation, to understand the situation, and to then create success based on that situation. And and that's really what we do, man. Like, And I'm I'm all in on that, dude, Like, because we've seen some amazing people already come through. Like one girl came through NCI not even four months ago, and she's already working with over 100 clients. That's awesome. So yeah, it's amazing. So before you started the the education piece, did uh, was your business just you were doing nutrition coaching? Like is that what that was that that was your thing? Before I started, uh, which one NCI? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I still own a uh, I still own a nutrition coaching business. So I own IN three nutrition as well. Okay, uh, and so that's where I've got fifteen coaches working with me, and that's where we actually work with people on their own nutrition. Um, Ironically, man, and this is what I this is when I knew like we were doing the right thing. So many people that have come through IM3 to get us to do their nutrition coaching end up wanting to go to NCI because we've had such a profound impact on them that they're like, man, like you guys did this for me. I want to go out in the world and pay it forward. And like that is epic, man. Because when you have such a profound impact on somebody like that, like and that they want to go and pay it forward, like, dude. That's the trickle down effect I want to have so far beyond the time that I leave this world. Like, I want people 100 years after the time I die to be like, yeah, the methodology was, you know, when Jason Phillips was alive. Like, that's rad and that's a legacy. I was going to say, that's the word legacy. Because once you, once you get into, I mean, you're talking, and this is just exponential growth here in terms of the amount of people you're going to be able to, to impact. That is, that's a legacy but piece. That was, and that was really the foundation of why we opened. Like, you know, last year we serviced 3,300 people. That's a lot of people for yeah. a company, right? Oh, yeah. There's some people that may not touch 2,000 clients in their whole career. Yeah. We I mean, did that of, one year. Think of it in terms of actual people, like in a room. Yeah. It's a lot of people, right? Uh-huh. But here's the problem. You just narrowed it down. In a room. Yep. If we put all the people in an auditorium that I've ever helped, that's an issue. Yep. Because there's millions, if not billions of people in this world that need this help that, in my opinion, sometimes are getting the wrong education. And I was, that's the need that I saw. And then I saw a lack of proper education. And that truly was the foundation of NCI because I'm like, all right, how can I multiply our impact? How can I grow it the fastest? And it was getting other educators out. And now I say, all right, if we put a thousand people through NCI and each one helps a thousand people in their career. That's a million people helped. And we're on track to put a thousand people through this year. Yeah. So that's, that's every year. That's a million people a year. If I, if I have NCI open for 20 years, that's 20 million people. Like you can't put them in a room, amazing, man. Now we're talking impact and that's the world. Like, man, like that's, as a former anorexic dude, I don't ever want anyone to have to go through what I went through. Yeah, and you know, it, and it's very critical now because I mean, education is is more important because the information is so readily available. I mean, we have everybody 
everybody listening right now has all the information they can ever want to find right in their hand. But the problem is a lot of it's bad information. And if you don't have the background, how are you, your average person walking the street, how are you to decide what's good advice versus bad advice? It's it's bad information. It's conflicting information. It's conflicting. confusing. It's like, you know, I mean, you know, like I know a client comes to you and they're like, well, I read this. And then you tell them something completely different. And then their friend is working with someone else and that, they tell them something different. And it's like, and I'm not saying that everything is right, nor am I saying everything is wrong. I think that you need to be able to validate why you're taking a certain approach. And as a coach, if you want your client to create compliance, you need to be able to validate why you're taking the approach that you're taking. Like it, it just is what it is. Well, I think even you just said it. The, the problem almost isn't that it's just outright bad information. A lot of it has value. So you take someone like from a nutrition side, okay, one person, they're losing fat on a lower carb diet. Then this next person's losing fat on a higher carb diet. But then they start talking to each other and they start confusing each other. Well, maybe yours is better. Maybe I should switch to that, but I'm already getting good results. But no, you know, so then it's just, there's a lot of ways to skin a cat. It's just, you have to, as a coach, you got to be able to validate, like you said, validate why, why are you doing something? That's it, dude. I agree hundred percent. And I think that, you know, when you get a client to understand why they're implementing, they usually tend to imp- implement and actually be compliant. And yep. as we know, as coaches, success is really hard without compliance. Yeah. I was just going to say compliant. I mean, that's the word. I mean, that is, is the word because I mean, I'm going to ask you this. What do you, from, from your years of coaching, what are, what are some issues there? What do you, what causes people not to be compliant? Because a lot of times a lot of, they know. You, you sit them down and you, you give them two options. They probably know which is the right one. But so we've actually touched it? on it self worth and self awareness. Um, so a lot of people mess up their diets because of social settings, right? Mm-hmm. They blame it on social settings. Well, you know, I, I felt weird being the one to order a salad or I felt weird customizing my food. And it's like, well, why do you feel weird? Well, because you're being judged. Well, I can tell you, I've never judged anyone what they order food wise. And most people, if you surveyed them would say, nope, I don't really give a shit what anyone at the table eats. Like you're pretty focused on your own food. So that's your own bullshit in your own head. And so it really comes down to a mindset thing. Well, at NCI, we actually have four level one courses. We have level one nutrition coach, we have level one mindset specialists, level one hormone specialists, and business systems. The reason we include a mindset component is because we as coaches need to check our mindset sometimes and, and check our expectations, but we also need to be able to help our clients with their own mindset because when that's right, then compliance starts happening. So it's almost always a function of self-worth and self-awareness. Yeah, when even that example, like why – why would anybody really care? I mean, look at what other – it should be the other way around. You should be caring. Yeah. You should be looking down at why, why are people ordering a bunch of shit? Like that. It's, like Gary, it's like Gary Vee says, you know, I give zero fucks what people think about me. Yeah. And you know how hard – like people it's say that, hard. right? People use that that saying all the time. Everybody that's listening to this, like tens of thousands of people that will download it, right? I would be willing to bet you maybe 1% to 2% could really make that statement and 100% mean that. 100% and I'm going to, I'm going to call my own bullshit out. I can't make that statement. Yes. Believe it. Like oh. I have my own fucking demons, like hundred percent factually straightforward. I cannot make that statement and believe it. And trust me, I'm working towards it every day. Oh yeah. I was just, as you were, as you were talking, I, that was exactly what I was going to say. I'm like, I've said it. I've said I give zero fucks and I, I give less of a fuck than a lot of people, yes. but I, but I can't, I, I got to check myself. I still yeah. care about what people say. Yeah, you know? dude, I'm the same way, man. Like I've definitely made improvements and I'll continue to improve, but our whole journey is self-improvement. Um, and so I'm forever going to be on that journey. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like self-improvement and, and self-development. It's, it's a, it's a whole like rabbit hole. Once you get down it, it's just, you, you want to con- like, you know, almost like when a lot of time, a lot of times that people, when they get into fitness, I bet a lot of people can relate to this. Whenever you really get into training or nutrition, you just want to devour the information. You're sort of looking okay. for, for a lot of stuff. I'm kind of at that stage where that's how I've been on personal development for the last couple of years where it's just I've been digging so deep because I've noticed that the more I invest in myself and back into myself, the better I every aspect of my life gets. Well, I mean on that note, dude, think about the clients that you've had that have been really successful. The clients that are able to create success usually at the end of the journey are the ones that have – 
also created their own self-development as well, not just their physical selves, right? Like a a real transformation is never just physical. And, And if somebody transforms the physical without the emotional or the mental, that transformation doesn't last. But if the emotional or mental transforms along with the physical, that's a transformation that is that remains true for a very long time. Um, and, and that's really the biggest differentiator of people that see long term success and, you know, not sustained success is did you did you evolve personally as well as physically? Yeah. I mean, when I think back on all my most successful clients, you almost universally see them go from uh, who they were in the beginning to a completely new person by the end, not just physically, not just in appearance, like you said, but who they are. I think it's a, a Jim Rohn quote, but it's success isn't, it's not what you have to do. It's who you have to become to get that success. Completely agree with it. I love that. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, and it's, and it kind of goes back to the, the process point we made earlier. It's, just doing the things day in, day out that lead to that goal. And once you do all those little process things, you change slowly. It's not going to happen overnight, but slowly you just turn into that next person. It's true. So <laughs> true, man. I love it. I love it. So when you were in nutrition coaching, what uh, what was like your, your demographic? What, what type of people did you work with? You know, initially I, because I was doing a lot of CrossFit, I got a lot of CrossFitters mm-hmm. that would come to me. Um, and, you know, I don't necessarily have a demo that I necessarily like reach out to. I, I feel equipped to operate with anybody that comes. I think anybody that, that does come in, you know, one of the first things we educate them on is, is really understanding their goals. I think a lot of people have very misaligned goals with the actions they're willing to take. Um, and I'll, I'll call out all the high level CrossFitters. They all think that they want to be really lean, but the reality is they want to perform at a very high level. Yes, and, yes. and the truth on a continuum is that performance nutrition sits here and aesthetic nutrition sits over here. Like they're two very different protocols. Like to, to stand on the podium at the Olympics or the CrossFit Games, you don't go there because you have the best abdominals. Like no. you go there because you won with a specific time. Like to win the Mr. Olympia, you don't win the Mr. Olympia because you have the biggest bench press or biggest squat or, or best brand time. Like it's because of the way you look, nobody gives a shit what you squat. You may be, you never even squatted in your prep. Right. Yeah. And, and so recently I've taken this continuum. I've actually added a third point and called it like a uh, longevity, um, because longevity protocols are completely independent of those two. Um, so I actually, anybody that comes in, the first thing is we talk about is where, where are their goals within the triangle of awareness? Um, and then we actually help them understand the subset of goals that they may or may not have, uh, with their spoken goal. And that's really how we create the protocol moving forward. Yeah. And that's so important because a lot of times what happens is people are, they say they want one thing, like you said, but the truth is they want something different. And I think as a coach, it's getting through the bullshit and trying to find the real reason, the real why. That's it, dude. A hundred percent. Well, and, and, and then to add another component to it, it's maybe, so fat loss, maybe it is fat loss. Maybe that is, you know, you want to lose fat, but why do you want to lose fat? There's there's probably oh, okay. another layer. Yeah. I mean, like if I could snap my, you know, for a lot of dudes, it's like, well, I want to get laid more. It's like, yeah. if I could snap my fingers and get you laid more, would you actually want to change? And the answer is, well, no, I like my beer. I like my cheeseburgers. Like, I don't really care how I look, but if chicks were looking at you tomorrow, and, and you didn't have to go through this whole thing. So the reality is it's a more of a personal development thing, yes. right? Like, cause uh-huh. I don't give a shit how good your body gets. You're still not going to have the self-confidence or the ability to talk to a female any differently. Yeah. And your personality is still shit. Yep. So really what we need to work on is your internal work. Your personality uh, will probably get worse. <laughs> or yeah. Or you become a douchebag like yeah. most of the guys in this industry. But, yeah. um, you yeah, know, the, the truth is if, if I get somebody like that, one of the things that we're working on almost immediately is also developing, um, developing their personal selves along with the physical journey. Because I know if it's like interpersonal connections, your evolution has to be sure. If you want the physical to be part of it, great. Like I'll get you that. But I also need to help you on the personal evolution as well. Um, and that's the important thing to understand. hundred percent. Yeah. I, I, I work with a lot of, I mean, I'm a power, I compete in power of things. So I work with a lot of guys nice. who are interested in, in strength. And yep. then you, you always have that underlying, aesthetic component. I mean, can I get it? I mean, shit, I want to look good too. Everyone, everyone wants to fucking look good. But when you're telling me, Hey Kyle, Hey, I want I'm hiring you to be my powerlifting coach. I want to hit these numbers. Yeah. But then three weeks in, you're like, Hey dude, I think we need to go on a cut because 
I don't know. I don't like the way I look. I'm like, okay, well, that's great. But remember those numbers we had, you know, if, if, if we look to lose 20 pounds, you're probably not going to hit those numbers. So what do you want to do? Hey, I'm, I'm cool with either, but we have to, we got to yeah. define what your goals are. That's it, dude. I love it. <laughs> that's awesome, dude. Jason, this has been, this has been a lot of fun. What, uh, what, your, what are your goals for 2018? Oh man, my number one, I want to have a very healthy and happy baby. Um, yeah. in six weeks, Congrats. Um, six weeks. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, man. Six weeks away. Um, that's my biggest goal, you know, is just to really be, be there for my family and, and raise a really, uh, healthy, like a healthy child. Um, you know, number two, I kind of, I, as you know, in the entrepreneurial journey, you kind of don't maximize yourself enough at some point. So number two is, is rebuilding myself. Um, you know, getting my own training and nutrition, um, back to where I really feel like I'm maximizing it. Like I did a lot of maintaining and not a great job of maintaining to be completely honest in 2017. Um, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Right. And so getting, getting focused back on myself and then obviously scaling the impact, man, um, reaching more and more people every single day, uh, making sure that we're delivering our message that we know to be true, um, and helping people create success in their lives. That's it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's wild. Cause I, I look back at, at 2017 and I mean, I have to be honest with myself. I even, I even made a whole podcast about this where you have to ask yourself tough questions when you want to improve. And a lot of times it's, it's, it, you know, they're, they're hard questions for a reason. And I look back, I'm like, oh man, I wasn't a hundred percent satisfied with, with my training last year. And yep. I still was in the gym. I was still in the gym, still doing it. But my mind was, you know, building yeah. the business, building the podcast, you know, other things and good things. It wasn't like I was sitting around playing video games. It was good shit. Sure. I was being productive, but again, I'm calling my own bullshit. Like, okay, you want to, you want to improve your training? Okay, well, we'll start putting in that effort. Start doing the things that you need to do to take it from an eight to a 10. Yep. hundred percent, dude. Completely agree, man. And, and for me, it's like, I'm glad that you said you got to the gym because the truth is I didn't even get to the gym. Yeah. Like I went from five, six days a week to like two and yeah. you know, listen, that's a balance that we all have to find. And I think that people look to us as like the leaders and I, I definitely care far more about the impact that I have on people than I do on myself. Like it's, that's a really cool and sexy thing to say from marketing, but I'm telling you it's not great long-term and sustainability wise. Um, and I think that everyone that's listening, like, yeah, that's, that's great. And it sounds very selfless. Um, in reality it's very selfish because if I'm not maximizing myself, um, then I'm not maximizing my ability to help everybody else in the world. Um, and that's a very cool, that's a very, uh, it's very important thing for a lot of people to understand. Well, yeah, especially people as, as fitness, uh, leaders, fitness entrepreneurs, it's, it's easy for us to neglect our own fitness if oh, yeah. you're in the gym. If you're, if you're a trainer in a gym or you're working online, whatever, when, when this is your life, it's very easy just to neglect yourself. But then if you're not taking care of yourself, you can't take care of anybody else. So you gotta, sure, you gotta look back on yourself and do what's going to make you happy long term. Very true, my man. Cool. Completely I agree. It. I love it. How uh, how can people get more information about you? Dude, um, hit me up at in3nutrition.com, in3, um, and for NCI, for anyone that's interested in going through the education platform, it would be nci-certifications.com, um, obviously the NCI is standing for Nutritional Coaching Institute. Uh, and then I always say, you know, every podcast I go on, hit me up on social media, Instagram, Jason Phillips underscore IN3. Facebook, it's Jason Phillips. I'm super passionate about creating connection with people. Like I really have this genuine desire to move every single person forward. So anyone that reaches out, I will get back. Um, I'm meticulous with my scheduling. So if I don't get back to you that day, like I will get back to you. Um, it's always me. It's not an assistant. Like that's, that's something I'm really passionate about. So if I can move anyone that heard this forward, um, please, please, please reach out. It would mean the world to me. I'll put the links to all that stuff in the show notes. Definitely hit Jason up. I'm, I'm the same way though. I mean, like I, I, I think I told you even before we started going live here is that that's why I started the podcast. I'm just big on, on connections. Yeah. Like I just want to have connections with cool people, have these conversations and, and you know, a lot of times it leads to more stuff, you know, from a, again, from like a, a selfish standpoint, but yeah, I mean, it's just. Hey, it's a win-win. I love it when it's a win-win for everybody. I think I think podcasting is such a good medium for people to consume things right now. I think we're all very busy. Um, you know, the whole entrepreneurial thing. Everyone's like, got to read a lot of books. Like, I don't ever read. Like, super transparently, I haven't read a book in two years. Um, I've listened to plenty on Audible, yep. but I haven't actually sat sat down to read a book in two years. And you know, the only time I really have to read a book is on a plane, and I would much rather put my headphones in and just chill. So. 
Um, you know, I think audio is a great way for people to consume media. Everybody loves video these days. And so, um, you know, we're giving people what they want. They get the information that we know they need. It's a win-win for everybody. Um, and dude, the, anytime I have the opportunity just to pay it forward to one person, right. Stealing from Gary V again, obviously I'm the biggest fanboy in the world, yeah. but stealing from him, um, you know, one is greater than zero. So if one person heard something today that moved them forward, like we won, yeah. you know, like that's it, dude. Like if one person is affected positively, like that's the game. Yeah. I think that's so much of what really has motivated me with this podcast too, because initially I tried really hard to not even look at the numbers, like in the beginning. Okay. Don't even look at the numbers, yeah, but yeah. then of course you start. And then as it starts growing, you get excited by that. But really what you just said, it hits the nail home. I mean, it's, if we could just impact one person, if one person heard, and they might've heard this message 10 other times. Yes. Maybe today, maybe listening to this right now. Maybe today they take action. Dude. Exactly. Like, yeah. I mean, it, that's it. Like one is greater than zero, brother. Like, and that's that's literally what everyone has to remember in their own journey. Like, get up, take one step. Like, one step is better than zero steps. Like, just do one thing. Like, move forward. Have like one singular approach. Like, that's it. It goes full circle. We talked about it in the beginning. Like, just do one thing today. One thing that's gonna move you forward, and it's a win. That's it, dude. Awesome. I love it. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Absolute Strength Podcast. I know I had a ton of fun producing it for you. And before you go, if you could just drop me some feedback, I'd love it. I love reading your feedback. So you can go over to iTunes, leave a five-star rating, write a little review of what you think of the podcast. I absolutely love it. I read every single one. But it's cool if you don't want to do that. I get it. I get it. No one wants to really go out of their way to, to do anything, let alone write a review. But I want to get your feedback. So send me, drop me a line on Instagram at Hunt Fitness or on Facebook Kyle Hunt, or on Twitter, or send a, a pigeon, or something. I don't, I don't know. I just want to hear your feedback. So, if you want to give me some feedback, let me know what you think. Hit me up on Instagram at Hunt Fitness. And before you go, I have one last thing. One last thing I want to say. I have a program I want you to check out. It's actually called the Absolute Strength Program, and the link is in the show notes. It's a program I designed to help increase my own squat bench and deadlift, and I got pretty strong off of it. And I think you're going to like it. It's a, it's a great book. Thousands of people have got amazing results from it. It's in the show notes. All right, guys. Until next time. Until next episode. Peace.